Hi there boys and girls, welcome to lesson 4.8, zeros and the product. This is actually our last lesson for chapter 4. Our essential question is how do you know you have the correct number of decimal places in your product? We're going to go ahead and work through some practice problems together and tomorrow in class we'll practice some more. All right. So please turn in your Go Math book to lesson 4.8 and let's begin. We're going to use the same strategy today, similar to what we did yesterday in our lesson. You want to look at your question, and then here I want you just to only look at the numbers that you see as digits, like 7 and 2, as whole numbers. And we're going to come over here and we're going to write them as 7 times 2. Once you have your product, 14, then we're going to go back and count how many spaces you should have to the right of your decimal point. I have one, two, three. So do you see right here, you're going to start right here as if it were 14 holes, but now you're going to change it. One, two, there needs to be a zero right here, and then you can place the decimal point. So seven hundredths times two tenths would be 14 thousandths. Here's just a rule. Anytime you multiply a hundredths times a tenth, it always goes to the thousands place. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and put a zero right here to show that I have zero ones. All right, so let's go ahead and begin. Let's look at question number two together. Question th two says three tenths times one tenth. So what is three tenths of one tenth? Well, like we did in the little practice problem, we're going to go ahead and just rewrite this as three times one. 3 times 1 is 3. Now, now, if you look right here to the right of my decimal point, I have one space and another space. So I have two spaces to the right of my decimal point. But over here, I just have 1. So we have to go ahead and add a 0 here into my product. Now I have two spaces that I can have to the right of my decimal point. I'll put a decimal point there. We have 0 holes. So what is three tenths of one tenth, it would be three hundredth is the product. All right, let's go on to question four for more practice. Again, like the example we gave, you're going to just go ahead and rewrite it as eight times three. Just pretend it's a whole number for just right now. Look at the fact that you know. Eight times three we all know is twenty-four. But if you look to the right of my decimal place, I have one that goes to the hundredths and one goes to the tenth. So we have three spots to the right of my decimal point, but I only have two right here. So let's go ahead and add in one more spot, and now I can have three places to the right of my decimal point. And we'll put a zero there as a whole. So now my real product is going to be 24 thousandths. So 8 hundredths times 3 tenths is 24 thousandths. Are you starting to get the hang of this? Let's practice a couple more. Alright, this is going to be 2 tenths times 4 tenths for number 6. What equation do you see? If you turned it into just whole numbers, you would have 2 times 4. And we all know 2 times 4 is 8. But as you can see, we have 2 spots to the right of my decimal. So we need to have 2 spots to the right of the decimal point here. So if I don't have a space, you must add a 0 to the product. Now I have one spot, two spots. So let's go ahead and create our decimal point. Make a whole number there of zero. So our product will be eight hundredths. Two tenths of four tenths is eight hundredths. All right, let's go to number eight. I want you to try this one on your own by pressing pause, and then let's check together and see if our products are the same. Go ahead and press pause now and work this one out. All right, you should have saw that I see eight and eight. I'm just gonna mentally call that 64. So you should write 64 in your product, but you can see that you have one spot, two spots, three spots to the right of your decimal. So we have to make sure we have three spots to the right of my decimal here. I'm gonna put a zero and a decimal point. Now I have three places to the right of my decimal. My product will be 64 thousandths. All right, go ahead and do number 10 on your own and press pause and we'll check it together. All right, for this one, boys and girls, you should have said that two times three is six. But you need to have three spots to the right of your decimal, so you must make three spots. So I have 
two hundredths times three tenths will be six thousandths. I hope our answer is matched. All right, let's go down to our real world problem solving at the bottom of the page. All right, for question number 13, it says a beaker contains five tenths liter of a solution. That means a half of a liter of a solution. Jordan uses eight hundredths of the solution for an experiment. How much of the solution does Jordan use? So our equation is that Jordan uses, of five tenths, Jordan uses eight hundredths of it. So we want to know what is eight hundredths of five tenths. Go ahead and multiply the number that you see and then remember how many decimal points it should be to the, to the right of your decimal point. Go ahead and press pause now. All right, friends, you should have said eight times five is 40, but I need to have three places to the right of the decimal and there's only two there for right now. Let's add a zero. Now I have three places. So Jordan used 40 thousandths of a liter of the solution. All right, let's go on to number 14. Number 14 says a certain type of nuts are on sale at 35 cents per pound. Tomorrow buys two tenths of a pound of nuts. How much will the nuts cost? Now remember, she only buys two tenths of a pound and they are 35 cents per pound. But she's only going to buy two tenths of them. So how much will the nuts cost? So let's go ahead and start multiplying what we know. Let's go ahead and call this 35 times two and that's going to be 70. But look, boys and girls, there's three spots to the right of the decimal point, but I only see two spots. Let's add in an extra spot and put our decimal point. Now, what have we learned about money? We've learned that you can have whole numbers, which will be your dollars, and your cents can only go up to the hundredths place. So in this case, she only spent seven cents on the nuts, and that actually makes sense because it's only 35 cents for a pound, and she didn't even buy a whole pound. Well, she didn't even buy a half a pound. She bought less than a half a pound. So I need to rewrite this as just seven hundredths because remember, seven hundredths has the same value as 70 thousandths. We learned that in fourth grade. All right, so we would say that she only spent seven cents for the nuts. All right, let's flip our page over to the back side. So your homework questions for tonight are questions one and two at the top and then I want you to go ahead and do questions three through six on your own for review and we'll check all six tomorrow in class. Please make sure you assess yourself at the top of the page. Let me know how you feel that you are. Are you a one, novice, two, apprentice, three, practitioner, or four? Do you feel like an expert? You really understand where to place a decimal point when you need to add zeros. All right, and just to show you these questions again, I did notice that right here, this might confuse some of you. This is just the end of a sentence. That's not an extra decimal point. It's Cliff multiplies six hundredths and five tenths, period. So if you want to just quickly write that, like this to help you understand that might help you solve your problem a lot better. All right, I didn't want anybody to be confused tonight. All right, have a great night. Bye-bye.